Once, uh, when I was a, a child, I looked into the pantry cabinet down below where mom sometimes put things, we would say hid things, and saw a jar of sweet gherkin pickles. And I said to her, Mom, can I have these? And she said, no, they're for Christmas. And I said, it's July. The answer was still no. For in her world, my mom did lots of remote pepper preparation. There were times and uh, the seasons that took more of the family's income and money, and when she could, she prepared. She prepared for Thanksgiving, she prepared for Christmas in the summer, getting those things that don't seem like they're huge expenses, but add up when you're getting them all at once. And she'd start storing them away so that our celebrations would be festive. And before we got there, there would be school clothes and Thanksgiving dinners and birthdays and all sorts of things that had to be purchased. So the idea of being prepared and preparing for something was very core to who she was and thus very core to who we were. Today we, we live in a society that's in the midst of preparing. If you, all we have to do is go down Grafton Street and see the beautiful Christmas lights or South Ann Street or over to Henry Street. And we know that we live in a city that is beginning to come alive with Christmas spirit that um, all you would have had to do is walk around here last night at about midnight and you would have seen lots of Christmas spirit along with really, really sparkly dresses and, and inappropriate summer sandals on a cold night. But we do know that this period that we're in is a period of pepper preparation. We're not celebrating Christmas, and we often hear people dress like me saying, we shouldn't do too much Christmas and Advent. And in fact, in some sense, it makes sense, but in most sense, we have to understand that even our preparation for the celebration of Christmas involves some Christmassy things. We have to decorate trees. We ourselves decorated the church this afternoon. Perhaps it's too early. Perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's the day we could do it. And as we move towards our major celebration of Christmas, but the most important part of understanding Advent is, yes, it's an opportunity for us to slow down and to look at our lives as we prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ as one like us, coming as an infant, but we know that the bigger part of Advent is actually to slow down and to look at our preparation for Christ coming at the end of time, so that when we celebrate his first coming, we know we're a little bit more ready, a little bit more prepared for his coming in glory. Today we have John the Baptist dressed in camel hair and a leather belt, wild hair. Easy to caricature, but here he is looking and imaging an Old Testament prophet, proclaiming repent. And the words of John the Baptist are the words of the people of his day, repent, repent of your personal sin, know where you're falling short. But also think of who we are as a people and as a society and where we're falling short of what God is asking of us, what God wants for us and from us. And ask God's forgiveness for that so that you could be ready. And for John, that was seek this baptism of repentance to prepare yourself for something in the future. We know that John is said to have eaten locust and wild honey. Now, besides being a pretty strange diet, it seems to symbolically represent the idea of judgment, locust, that we know across the Old Testament, infestation with locust or swarms of locusts represent God's just judgment. And he ate wild honey, which represents salvation. That when finally Egypt was behind them and Israel was crossing the desert, they arrived in Cana, to the land of milk and honey. 
so that in John's words are words of warning and words of salvation to guide us and to guide the people to say there may be chastisement and there may be judgment, but it's simply so that we can be open to and be ready for the fullness of God's salvation. John himself seemed to be in the mindset of so many of his day, waiting for that great messianic figure, that, that warrior king that would come and save Israel. And here he is preparing to baptize Jesus, who comes as something completely different, who comes not with the word of salvation that sounds like we're going to win, but with the word of salvation that says, peace be with you. And God loves you. We are preparing in this season of Advent to celebrate Christ's coming as one like us, not as a warrior king, but as a child, as an infant. I invite you after Mass to go into Our Lady Chapel and any time in the next month or so to stop and look at that tableau we look at so often with plaster, plaster statues portraying the different people who were at the manger 2,000 years ago. But to see through that, to see through the modern image and understand what God did for us. If you've ever known a couple who have had a child, especially their first child, you understand that for all that they expected and all that they hoped for, all that they thought they were ready for, nothing overwhelms them quite like a little bundle of joy. And not simply because it's joy, but because this little, tiny, mewling creature owns them in a way nothing else does. Think of a house that's completely overwhelmed by the possessions of someone who can hardly walk. Think of a parent's time, a mother's love that is so outpoured on someone who can give so little back, a father's joy on his, over his children in a way that is probably unexplainable by those very same people until they had these children who came as gift, who came bringing nothing, who take everything, but who are the centerpiece of their life in real and powerful and meaningful ways. There is nothing that upsets a household like a baby. And the household of the world was upset. Went into human creation, coming as one like us, God sent himself, his son, to show us the way, to walk with us, and to help us recognize that the fullness of what God wants from us is not perfection or the building of God's kingdom on earth in some majestic way, but the becoming of the kingdom of God by allowing the Christ child to teach us about dependence, to teach us about commitment, to teach us about the depth and the fullness of love, human love, which is but a reflection of the fullness and the boundlessness of the love of God. So today, we're told to prepare and in our world, we know there is much to prepare for. We should prepare for our celebration of Christmas. There are presents to be bought and wrapped. There are, there are feasts to prepare for. There is scheduling of untold numbers of appointments and meetings. We know all of that. But let's not miss this opportunity to prepare our hearts. To recognize that if we allow Christ 
to d dwell in us, that we will become ever more aware of our own shortfalls, our own failings, those personal moments and times when we fail to see the fullness of Christ in others, those we love and those we meet on the street. We must also take this opportunity to look at our society and those places we fall short. And hopefully, for just our celebration of Advent, that this parish alone, but the church itself, can become ever more fully the presence of Christ on our world, such that when we step out onto the street and we connect with the eyes of someone who is broken, someone who is lonely, someone who is homeless, someone who is hurting, when we recognize in the elderly person who has very few people to speak to them, when we see in the face of a teenager the desire, the need to connect with someone so they can simply want to live one day longer, we must recognize that that is what God wants for our, from us. He wants us to be the love and the compassion that is that is. God himself. And he wants us, yes, to build the kingdom of God, but not through our efforts, but by allowing God to shine through us and allowing this community and every community of faith in this city, allowing this city, this country, and this, this family of nations to recognize that there is brokenness and pain and suffering but there is goodness, and there is compassion, and there is hope. And that this Christmas, the fullness of God's love can shine forth just a little bit more if we prepare.